Okay, to start the series, it's good to see everybody. It's good to not see everyone that's on camera, but um, we're really excited that you're, that we have, are able to live stream this along with um, having an actual in-person lecture, it's amazing. Um, I know just give a little intro and then um, kind of tell you how it'll run after, we, after we're done with the talk part of things here. So I'm realizing I left my notes over there, but that's okay. Um, this is the design lecture series we've been running since 2016. And it is our, um, one of our favorite things in the design program here. I'm gonna walk over here with Mike, thank you. Um, it's, uh, we're doing four of them this fall and we'll be confirming the dates later this week. It's in person for PNCA students and always streaming live so that folks can join us who were able to support us um, throughout the year last year when we were remote. Without further ado, I want to introduce our guests. We have two wonderful people here from Industry PDX and I'll let them do most of the intro to um, what they do there, but Gavin is a video editor turned graphic designer. His practice involves heavy focus on typography and making things move on the screen. So you'll see a lot of movement in this um, presentation, sometimes at the same time, typography that moves. Um, Gavin also occasionally draws and creates typefaces. When he's not looking at the screen, he likes riding bikes and trying not to crash them, taking photos and trying not to ruin his roll of film, relatable, and plucking on a guitar that he needs to return to his friend. I'm sorry, Natty. <laughs> um, our second guest is Brooklyn Worthington. Brooklyn is a graphic designer who values community, connection, and storytelling. She aims to be candid and explorative in her work and thinks that you can advance and engage culture while also having fun. Most recently, her work has been focused on layout, art direction, and defining the tone for different projects. And outside of work, she likes to surf, swim, work in the garden, and crochet always finding, working to find peace among the moving parts. So without further ado, welcome Gavin and Brooklyn. Hello and welcome. I'm Gavin, obviously. I'm Brooklyn. And we're here to share what we do at industry, um, as well as share a little bit about ourselves and give a little insight into our transition from school to industry. So what is industry and what do we do? Um, industry is a creative consultancy. Uh, we create strategy, communication, products, campaigns, and experiences. Um, industry's history stems from industrial design uh, as well as strategy and very research heavy based um, campaigns. Uh, originally, a lot of the strategy and marketing was done, and then the creative work was handed off to other places, but in the past couple years, we've been taking on a lot more of that creative work um, and been asked to do a lot more of the designing. So, But strategy and research and storytelling have been the core of a lot of the work that we do for since the beginning, basically. So... And we believe in the power of creativity to impact people and shape culture. But what do we do at industry? So I'm Brooklyn and my job title is a brand and communication des designer. Oh, sorry, brand and communication designer. And the role of designers varies across different studios, but Pretty much my responsibilities at industry um, span from technical design, um, some art direction. We do a lot of like overarching kind of like brand campaign tone work and some high level stuff. Um, and we're gonna show a few samples of our work. This was actually the first project that I started on when I started at industry. Um, this was for the ACG holiday 20 media brief. Um, I was super stoked to work on this project and learned a lot. It was 
kind of like my first dive into advertising life and like how fast paced things can move it was my first all nighter that I pulled outside of school. And um, I learned so much from this first project and was also super stoked on the work. It's kind of like a dream. And then um, this was some work for Converse Interpretations, which was their um, campaign to highlight some of the creatives within their community. Um, Gavin did the typography motion graphics for this. And then um, I, I guess, curated the videos and um, matched the audio that the um, community members sent in. And it was really fun and an opportunity to tell their stories and try to do it as best as I could. And um, this is my most recent campaign that launched. It was um, definitely like a big learning experience for me. Um, it was my first time leading the design on a campaign and also super fun to um, dive into the project and wear a lot of different hats. Um, I was responsible for the visuals and we also did art direction, was on photo shoots, video. I also uh, led one of the interviews for the influencers. Um, and it was like a huge challenge for me and definitely taught me that if you show up and you're enthusiastic, people will trust you with things that you might not feel totally confident doing and you'll always end up learning something in the end. So I'm Gavin, again. I'm also a brand and communication designer at Industry. Um, and like what Brooklyn said, um, our role as a designer at Industry is kind of varied. Um, because of our size, we're about like a mid-sized studio. And we do get to wear many different hats. And sometimes that doesn't involve just making logos, designing decks. Sometimes we are helping with like production and things like that. Um, but as far as like my role goes, I do a lot of motion design with Industry. Um, a lot of animation work gets uh, flowed in my way and um, type and layout and things like that as well. Um, so a lot of working with a lot of video is um, a part of my role in industry. So this was one of the first projects that I worked on for Converse, which is the Converse All-Star Series. Uh, this was an exclusive live stream event for the Converse All-Stars. Um, and so industry had established the brand identity for this season for Converse. And so when I got put onto it, um, I was sort of instructed to just sort of imagine uh, the motion for this event and for Converse sort of in general. So this was a really cool opportunity to just kind of like envision it, um, play around different things. And it was just a cool moment to like feel trusted in this and um, just kind of like have fun and um, just work within something, um, you know, just kind of push my limits on that as well. So this is a project for Nike. This was a little after this, the Converse project. This was for um, Nike.com. Uh, this was the beginning of like a longer project for Nike to kind of highlight their like um, Spanish consumer because they've done so much for the brand and elevated a lot and Nike hasn't really paid that back. So industry was a big influence in that and highlighting that consumer and telling that story. Um, we have a lot of people who are uh, from Mexico who um, are really, really good about telling that story and a lot of our leadership is from there. So <coughs> this was a, a really good practice in just like working with not a lot. Um, at this stage in the project, we didn't get a lot to work with. So as far as motion goes, um, it was just like, how can we make the swoosh do something? All right, we did that. We're going to make the swoosh do something again. Uh, and it kind of felt like origami in a way where it's like, what can you do with a piece of paper? And it kind of turns out you can do a lot with it. So this is a little bit of dead work that didn't really make the cut. And this is a part of like working at industry where we're doing a lot of revisions and a lot of different ideas that just don't quite make it. Oops. So this is the continuation of the Nike Puts on Common uh, La Nike app work where we're exploring more color and getting a little more expressive with it, um, trying to show them more vibrance to it, uh, working with these gradients and uh, just different effects with the colors and things like that. Um, a lot of the times you'll kind of start very big and 
paint a big brush um, as far as like, your explorations and stuff, and then it kind of gets narrowed down more and more as you go along. This was some work for Nike Fleece, where we saw an opportunity to kind of get more playful, more colorful, um, because we saw an opportunity to like, okay, fleece is kind of very neutral, very like neutral tones, very like laid back, minimal, understated, and why don't we just do the opposite? Let's make it loud, let's make it bold. Um, so channeling that through color and typography and just really like making it. Hello? Oh, sorry. And so now it like kind of gets more whittled down into like, um, I guess more Nike friendly, I guess, but still trying to like work within that. Like, how can we imagine like a face filter? Can you like have like a little AR feature on like showing off your fleece and things like that? There's some like lockup explorations as well. And this is like a page just showing like a bunch of different layouts for like working within these different identities or these different ideas and things like that. And this is a part of like what we do at industry is like kind of making these big brush strokes and like trying different things and just trying to like kind of get to the end without actually like noodling over it because we do work at a pretty fast pace. So we do have to kind of like make the most of the time of it. And I think to like what Gavin said, even though a lot of your work actually doesn't end up making it, making it to production, um, it doesn't mean that it's not valuable or you didn't have a good experience doing it, even if it's not something that you can show in your pro personal portfolio. Um, opportunities like this are the best way to learn and also like flex your design muscle and have fun. And I think like some of the most fun experiences I've had in my career have been on projects that didn't end up making the cut. So today we, all that being said, today we want to talk to you about making work that matters to you and obsessing and finessing over it. So um, I know there's like a lot of talk around, you know, make the work that you want to get paid for. Um, and I think like as a student, especially the way that times are right now and kind of the world that we're living in, I know I felt this personally graduating during the pandemic. Um, I felt like I needed to make the work that would give me the most diverse portfolio and what I thought would get me hired to jobs. But in realization, doing the work that you feel passionate about and you actually want to get hired for um, is the work that you will get hired for. Um, and your path to doing what you want or what you think you want to do right now isn't necessarily linear, but I do think that can be driven by your passions and what you love. Um, it's gonna change a lot and... <laughs> um, it will change a lot and your road there won't always be the same. But ultimately, being flexible in that and letting your passion drive your work will always um, have a better outcome. Exactly. I think um, dressing for the job that you want is an important part about it. And um, driving home the fact that like what you show is like what you'll probably get asked to do. Um, I think this was a big realization for me leaving school. And I think this is something that a, a peer told me is like what you show is what you'll um, get hired for. And I don't think I really believed it until when I was out looking for work and um, sharing my portfolio to people. And um, when I started at industry, they saw a lot of my motion work, but I was very stoked on like my type work at the time. Um, so it was sort of scary and also like empowering in a way just because um, you can like get the jobs that you want and like do the work that you're most passionate about and that matters to you um, just by putting it out there and just uh, celebrating it. Um, and so I wasn't always necessarily like the most passionate design student and it took me a while to get into it. Um, this was my work from my last year as a student and it's not to say it's like your work should be the same. Um, it's more so to say like at this point in time I had actually realized the things that I wanted to do in work and um, brought my own voice into it and I was thinking about um, the creatives that I looked up to and thinking about their p 
paths to where they are currently and definitely thinking a lot about how they weren't making work that they thought would get them a job or that seemed acceptable or cookie cutter. Um, people want you, sorry, you for your point of view and your passion and they want your voice to be heard in your work. So making work that you feel passionate about um, in the end, like I think this is what got me hired at my current job and it was definitely like my best realization. Um, Um, to add to what Brooklyn said too, just um, my final year uh, at school at PSU was when I felt like design really clicked for me. Um, and I think a big realization that I had was kind of making the distinction of like doing design for the sake of design and then doing design to explore interests. Like I feel very passionate about cycling and typography and motion and like, you know, things just like Monday things like coffee and things like that. And I think design can be a very powerful tool in exploring your interests and like um, communicating like what you're passionate about and like what makes it so special to you. So to add to that, school is short but your career is long and your time is now. School is a golden opportunity to make the work that matters to you. Um, right now you have so much time to experiment, finesse, noodle, as well as dial in all of your dream projects. Um, yeah, I think that it's a huge privilege to go to a university and like study graphic design and you're constantly surrounded by really brilliant minds and creatives and you can have so much to learn from them as well as your peers that feel very passionately about graphic design. Um, it's definitely an environment that won't be paralleled again and I think that like soaking the most out of it that you can. Um, will get you farther in your design career and make you feel more passionate about it. Um, I think that like a lot of the things that I was exploring when I was in school and starting to take design seriously have helped me on my path and the projects that I'm working on currently. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it's important to try and squeeze the most out of you can out of all of your peers and all your professors and uh, just yeah, soak in this time that you have in school, um, just because I think it's a, a perfect situation and uh, it can be a very big learning and just uh, revolutionary time, I guess. But also, who are you outside of your creative practice and what interests, likes, and dislikes uh, inform your work? I think a big distinction for me was taking the time to uh, enjoy my passions because 40 hours on the clock and then 40 hours like off it working all the time can obviously lead to burnout and things like that. But taking the time for those things that you love, like whether it's cooking or music or whatever, I think that can be just as informative um, for your design work and your creative work uh, as it is for like looking at references or inspiration online. Um, like what are you bringing into your work and how are you coming out in your work? Um, I think a big lesson that I learned from a friend who also graduated at the same time as me was he started on a project at a new job and sort of did what he thought was expected and they're like no 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 like we want you to do this like people want you for you not for just your technical abilities I think um, letting your personality show in your work is a big strong suit and also having like a wide array of interests and openness to learning and new experiences actually makes you a better creative. Um, we're not usually designing for other designers. We're designing for actual people or to touch actual people. So the more time you ex immerse yourself in real things, the better your creative process is going to be and the more encompassing your ideas are going to be. I also know that like through exploring my own passions, whether it be like something like footwear or basketball, it's led me to be um, designing on projects that are in line with that. And I think that like at the end of the day, your experiences inform your point of view and people hire you for your point of view. Okay. 
So um, all that being said, help yourself out. Make the work that matters to you. Um, right now is the most valuable time that you have. It's the start of your creative career. And while it's not like definitive of the rest of your career, it can change so much and like mistakes you make right now won't follow you forever. It can definitely be like a good introduction and start to the work that you want to do. Thank you. happy to walk around and like have people ask questions if folks want to ask but then um, I can hold the mic for these guys too. Um, does somebody want to start us off? Do you guys have any questions? Yeah? Maybe? No? No. Bijan does. Hi everyone. Thank you Gavin and Brooklyn. That was great. Um, my question is do you each can do you each consider yourselves a generalist or a specialist? And I'm curious um, what you classify yourself as and how you feel. Um, do you act as one or the other at industry? And I'm just curious like, if you feel like there's a benefit of one or the other, because I think that's always something I'm curious about. That's something I'm curious about. Um, I think for me, uh, being a specialist just kind of simplifies things a little bit. Um, I think I worry about spreading myself a little too thin and not, um, you know, diving deeper into something or kind of learning or understanding it more. Um, I guess like I've become like a, you know, full-time ocean designer within industry. Um, and that's allowed me to just dive deeper into that world and like understand more and like kind of like understand my capabilities and like capabilities of it in general um, and maybe just discover some things that I didn't expect when you're just kind of focused in on it. I think I wouldn't have been able to have that opportunity if I was like more general or if I just only touched the surface of it. I think it is really worthwhile and really informative to, to dive deeper into something more specifically. I think that in contrast to Gavin, I would consider myself more of a generalist and I don't think that like necessarily graphic design is like my actual passion. I think that it's more so the storytelling element and how you can connect different people. And like not everybody will love like classical art to say, but people do feel touched by TV ads and magazine spreads and maybe a book cover. So I think that's kind of like my more my passion in graphic design and so I think that like I haven't necessarily specialized in anything because of that. And I think it's like led to a lot of really great opportunities for me. I do appreciate the opportunity to like wear a bunch of different hats. And um, I think that like it's dependent on where your passion lies. Gavin's like an incredibly talented motion designer and he's also like amazing at typography. And I feel like if you like do feel really passionate about that skill, like own that in and follow that. But also like you don't have to be um, a specialist to be like an amazing graphic designer. Not to say that I'm amazing, but like the people I look up to, I wouldn't consider them all to be specialists. Um, most like creative directors, maybe they start out as a specialist, but in the end they're probably not. I think it's all dependent on like where your passion lies. And yeah. Kind of anything to add. Since Brooklyn was complimenting there. I think this is something that I've mentioned to Brooklyn before that she's really good at is just um, uh, a lot of the times we get asked to like define the tone of something which can sound kind of vague but it's like a lot of the times that looks like gathering images and photography uh, for like a photo shoot like is it indoors? Is it outside? If it's outside how is it getting treated? Is it like bright warm light? Is it dark and moody? And I think um, a lot of us at industry are asked to do that and it's a part of like creating decks and like pitching things. But I think talent or um, Brooklyn has just an incredible talent for just finding that like right imagery and the right tone and vibe. And I think, you know, that's the benefit of being the generous is just like you have such a big mental library of just like 
feelings and emotions and being able to kind of convey that through images and finding those right um, images that just like sell the story, connect with the client and just connect with more people. So I think that's in support of Brooklyn's point too of being a journalist. I love this back and forth like compliment fest and also I think it speaks to collaboration and that's such a buzzword but it's something that we talk a lot about a lot in classes here and experiment with actually more than we used to um, especially now that we get to be back in person um, I'm wondering if you can speak a little bit to like what that looks like when it's working really well and like maybe some problems that you've run into with collaboration in the studio Yeah, I think depending on like the project too, sometimes uh, you're collaborating with non-designers. Sometimes you are having to work with like an account manager who's like the point of contact with the client who's sharing stuff. And sometimes you do have to like collaborate and work with them and articulate your work to them and explain kind of like rationale like, hey, we needed to do this design treatment um, because X, Y, and Z. And um, I think communication is kind of a part of it too when it comes to collaboration. Um, many times, like I think a big realization for me was just trying to put myself aside in a design project and just sort of understand like what, um, what we're really trying to understand and convey. And I think that goes a long way when it comes to like talking with clients and non-designer people in the workplace just because you know, not everyone's gonna know like the difference between two fonts that look like Helvetica, but like um, when you're able to just, yeah, take that step back, it can go a long way, I think. I would say like, I never thought of myself as um, like a collaborator. Like I definitely thought that I like to work alone and when I started working at a studio, I really realized that I love working with other people. And I think the best ideas are formulated when you're making them with other people. Um, I think that it also like really helps you hold yourself accountable creative, creatively. Um, I think like a lot of times it is hard when you're feeling drained and you're like constantly being, oh sorry, being creative um, to, to continue doing that and I think that like working on a team helps hold you accountable for that and they can also like help pick up where you're maybe not fully performing um, I'd say like the difficulties of working on a team professionally is like to what Gavin said there are non creatives on a team not saying that they're like not creative because I think like if you're working at an agency and you're bringing things to life like that's a creative skill but it's not like they have the same kind of maybe mindset that we have. And I think kind of like balancing, well, I want more time on this. Well, we don't have more time on this. And um, I think like that kind of heads budding has been a bit hard for me um, in my career so far, but has also like led me to learn a lot about where I should actually like put my foot down and what I can let go and um, kind of like having a point of view when it's important and letting it go when it's not, so, yeah. Yeah, I love that, the talking about like conflict as potentially like, it might not be your favorite thing, but it's like, can be a productive thing, right? 100%, I think like, I hate conflict, like as a person, I really hate kind of like situations like that. But also like it's helped me realize so much in my professional career and it's also like I don't know really put things into perspective like is this actually worth stressing out about is this worth I don't know putting my foot down sometimes so yeah yeah like letting some things go and like also realizing when you need to not let something go right I'm just gonna say if anyone online has questions um, anyone streaming this, you should add them to the chat and we're taking a look at it now um, just to be sure we get everybody. And then if anybody in the room has a question too, you can just kind of like wave your arms around and you don't even have to get on the microphone. You can just kind of shout it out. But we'll make Jason get on the microphone. 
Uh, so you've talked a lot about making work that matters to you. Uh, I'm curious what, if it's important to make work that matters to you and work that you're interested in and passionate about, what's the value of going into an agency and making work for other people? It's a really good question. I think we might have touched on it like a little bit, but I think it's it's worth investing that time into knowing what you, you're passionate about and what matters, just because I think that you do still bring that perspective with you when it comes to um, you know, understanding and connecting with people. And I think like everyone has their way of doing that and like setting themselves aside or uh, bringing things down to earth when it comes to uh, working with like a client. Um, so I think like, yeah, like it is important to like put yourself, like prioritize yourself as well. And I think when you do that, you kind of like fill your cup up in a bit and you're able to like better serve like the people that you are working with because then you can meet them at that level and you can um, be passionate and like be, I guess, empathetic or just like listen to like what they're, what they're wanting and what their problem is, I guess. I think that in terms of like having a passion and then maybe going into work that like maybe you're not super stoked on it, that happens a lot. And I think that um, you can still bring your point of view and make impactful change because people don't, like, don't go to agencies because their problem is solved. They go because they want like a fresh creative solution and your point of view and your passion is always gonna like be the number one thing that can like help drive a creative solution or idea or like make something brilliant. I think that, um, I think that, yeah, people hire you for your point of view. And also like there's a lot of times when you're working on projects and it's like the thing you're the most stoked on and that's like such a beautiful feeling to like feel like maybe this is like part of your own story or you can help tell somebody else's story that you're really stoked on and like having passions outside of work and feeling passionate about your own work um, can help like kind of bring yourself into that project as well as like your kind of creative style or like your visual language that like you hold to yourself. People will put you on like projects and you'll have certain opportunities open up to yourself because of that. So like kind of having things that um, drive and define your work are important when you're working in a professional setting. setting. And to touch on something that Brooklyn said too about like people coming and approaching to um, to like approach uh, a studio, a specific studio for like a specialized thing is like I think people recognize like who can tell a certain story like the best or come with the best perspective. Uh, one of the founders of industry, Oved, he is from Mexico City and we have a recent project that's uh, based in Mexico City and I think that he's able to deliver like a really good perspective on like shooting a film there and like what that could look like and just giving like you know an inside perspective into like you know this is like home for somebody um i'm going to show you like the places that are unique to it and give that unique perspective as opposed to someone who's like not from their scouting locations or something like that um and maybe you know still bringing like a great perspective but like maybe it's it's not the the not like the one that they needed at that time I'm going to ask one more, and then we've got a couple on the chat here. Um, it's really interesting that you are all working so closely together, but then you have folks who are from so many other places. And uh, I'm wondering a little bit about, like, it's amazing to be, it's amazing to have that expertise from him who has actually lived there. How do you approach research differently for a project where you're really it's not your home it's not your like culture I I know it's different for everybody when you're doing research but um yeah are there are there things you pay more attention to or do you guys bring in outside partners or yeah so I think like personally at our studio um it's super diverse and I'm not like saying that to be like front facing, um, like most of the creative leads 
um, are people of color, and I think that brings in so many different experiences and kind of points of view. I would say, like, when I'm going to do res like, I was doing uh, research for a project for Nike Los Angeles, and it was based on the Latinx experience, and I think that that's an appropriate time to rely on your coworkers to see if they have any insight. Um, I know, like, you don't want to, like, be exploitative of people within your own, s within your own circle, um, and then I'd say, like, when you're doing kind of, like, digital research, I'd look for points of view that are, um, are from a first-person point of view rather than, like, written by another person. Um, I know, like, one singular experience can't be kind of, like, encompassing of an entire people's experience, but also um, can help inform and kind of, like, make you realize things that you wouldn't have. I think I heard something the other day. It was like stereotypes aren't true, but they're not um, they're not fully flushed out or something akin to that. And I think that there's like so many realizations that you wouldn't necessarily um, sorry realize um, if you were kind of like reading super generalist things. So I would like dive more into people's actual stories and experiences and read about first people's first person accounts of people's work and also kind of like look at the visual language of different people. Yeah, that's, that's great advice. Um, for folks online, these microphones are just getting a little glitchy, so we're just all of us taking little pauses to wait for them to catch up with us. Um, got one online here. So we have a question from our um, online community here, and they say, you mentioned the fast pace that things move at. What is a typical timeline from start to finish for a campaign? And are you involved in multiple projects simultaneously? Uh, yes, to the second one. There are a lot of times where we are juggling multiple things at once. So definitely yes to that. As far as timeline goes, it can kind of depend on like the size of the project, like how big it is and how many people it's reaching. Sometimes, like, it's, like, around three weeks or so. Like, for example, I got briefed in on a project for Nike, and the briefing started, like, last month or so, like, the end of last month, and we just wrapped the project, which was, like, a live stream event similar to the Converse thing. Um, and, yeah, sometimes it just depends on availability within the studio. Um, as far as like what we mean by like fast pace, I think a lot of it is like you're spending maybe like a day or two on like iterations and ideas and then like execution is like sometimes around the same time. Um, could be longer too. Um, yeah, sometimes it, it just depends, but I think usually the expectation is like to make as big and broad of streaming like um, passes, I guess. And I don't like necessarily have a ton of professional experience outside of the world that we've been living in since COVID started, but um, I definitely think that kind of throws a hammer in a lot of things, especially um, if you're doing um, a campaign that has photo shoots and video. Um, a lot of projects run on quite a long time and you need to constantly change and adapt due to like the circumstances that we can't control. Um, so there's not like necessarily an estimate on time that we spend on projects, but we're always flexible. We have one from the room here. Do you want a mic or you want to just shout it out? Um, okay, for the first one, um, I think it's kind of like depending on the scope of the project. Um, I wasn't like on the Nike fleece project, but I do know that multiple designers from our team, which is um, now six people, it's super small. So we're like super busy and not, most projects there's not more than one or two um, designers on a project, but there are, you know, like other creatives that you're working with, like creative directors and copywriters 
Um, but most of the time it is usually one designer on a project. Um, we rely on like our leads and our creative directors for support on that when we can. Um, but it is like really fun when you can like, we, uh, Gavin and I and our lead Marina had worked on a project together and that was super fun. And it's definitely like an enjoyable experience when you can work with other creatives, but not all the time. Exactly. I think sometimes you are like doing like art direction, creative direction and designing at like the same time. I think uh, for us in industry, we don't necessarily have like a defined art director. I mean, we have our lead designers who uh, we that we rely on for feedback and things like that. Um, but there are times where you do have to uh, take command on on certain things and just take the lead on it. Uh, so at least for us, like to answer the question about transitioning to school and like I think the unique experience that I had at industry is like, oh, like I am taking on like this responsibility sometimes. Um, and like, <coughs> I think for me, I graduated in 2019 before the pandemic and I was able to do fresh at PSU where we had like an in-person event. Um, and that was really crazy because I'm just like hustling all the time wrapping up all these projects and things like that. And I think that pace felt like some t like the pace at industry sometimes. So I think like PSU for me, like set me up for that as far as like, oh, like I can do this. Like the stress that you feel at school feels similar to working like on a tight deadline. And I think that is proof that like you are ready to do this job and that you are ready to get out there and do it because I, I think PSU, at least for me, and what I've heard from Jason here in the audience uh, about PNC, I think uh, um, the transition might not be as uh, scary as it might seem, at least it was for me. Um, I did graduate during the pandemic, and I think that it was, I kind of um, was home a lot and by myself a lot, and it wasn't like it was like, hard because the work was hard like the work was challenging it, that's like what I wanted I think it was uh, hard because it was a change of environment and a change of pace that I had gotten used to um, I think like I was definitely surprised by the pace of work but like kind of being flexible and being adaptable and like I hate to say like say yes to everything you have to have like your own personal boundaries but you know like being enthusiastic and open to experiences definitely kind of like helps alleviate a lot of that um, kind of entering the workforce experience that might be tough. Um, and, 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 um, I also think that, sorry. This mic is messing me up. <laughs> Should we trade mics? Oh. <laughs> All the mics. No, now it's working. It's okay. Yeah, I'll hand it back to Gavin. <laughs> um, does that help answer your question? Cool. Cool. Anyone else? Hello. Okay, this mic is working. Um, we do have another one from our online community. Uh, this comes from Steph Bianco. Um, I'm going to break it up into two questions because the first one's pretty fun and, and should be a quick answer. If, um, if how you feel today were a color and or a texture, what would that be? It'd be like green grass. Like green grass. It'd be like purple cement. <laughs> I have a headache. <laughs> okay, so the follow-up to that is, and it's not necessarily related <laughs> at all, um, any advice on building genuine connections with designers in the community without coming off too networky or pushy, especially while being online a lot? This was my point I was going to make before mm -hmm. I forgot, Perfect. was that like when you're getting out of school, I know like networking that term like sucks to say and it feels like you're exploiting people within your community and I think like a really good way to kind of like combat 
um, that feeling is to like show up and be stoked. Like I got my job because um, actually from Gavin, shout out. Um, I was talking to him at our portfolio review and I was like, I'm really inspired by industry's work and I would love to work there. And being kind of like blatant about whether or not you would like to work somewhere and being stoked on the work that they do kind of can make that connection feel more genuine and authentic rather than like you asking for a plug. So I definitely think like show up and be stoked. 100% agree. I think just showing up and being genuine and having a genuine interest in wherever or whoever you're talking to um, is a good way. And I think that adds to just like the idea of just like asking them like about their life and like what they're doing outside of design or like what influences them or like why they became a designer in the first place. I think people, at least for me and my experience, it's helped me connect with people really well and just like asking them like, hey, like, you know, um, how do you feel about this? Like, are you working on anything crazy right now? Like, are you, what was like your like, uh, wow, this like design client story or something like that. Um, and just kind of diving deeper and asking like kind of for the questions like, oh, like how did you get through that or something? Um, I think like helps, you know, people feel seen and heard or just like um, feel interested in or yeah, just like you're showing interest in them. Um, so yeah, I think just asking, yeah, going even deeper than just um, than just talking about design too. You can talk about other things as well. I think that also like it's really helpful to kind of like put yourself in that person's shoes because I think this is true for most people. Like, of course, if somebody came up to me and wanted to talk to me about like design, of course I'd be stoked and I could give them resources if I had them. So like, I don't know, extend the same kindness that you hope others do towards yourself. Another question from the room here. Which project are you talking about? Okay. Um, yeah, I motion started for me in high school. I was really into video games, and I was playing like a lot of Call of Duty, and I met a lot of random people online, and I met like these people online. They're like, "Hey, we're making like a team, like." can you send like your clips or your video game clips, highlights and all that stuff and we're gonna like make a video. I was like, all right, cool. So I did that and then I like got in touch with like their editor and he was using like Sony Vegas at the time or something. That was like the video game editing like standard, I guess. And I was like, that is so cool. I was just like so blown away about it. I was like, I wanna do that. And I was like, I have all this like footage that I can use. Like I'm just gonna learn how to do this. And I came across like a few people who did like After Effects tutorials and I would just like go through and kind of copy like the, the tutorial and then just be like, oh, okay, like I learned how to do this. And then after a certain point, like it could just kind of clicked. And when I was able to do it on my own, I was like, okay, I can like connect these pieces together. Uh, I can do this effect with here. Um, and then that kind of fell off when I started design school. And then I was kind of like in like the static realm for a while. Um, and then motion kind of kicked off. I was like, oh, okay, I can just like, you know, make a, some text to animate, that'd be kind of fun. And then I didn't realize like that kind of added like a little, like another dimension to some static work. Like even if it's simple too, like it doesn't have to be, um, I don't think like the technical skill needs to like, like blow the project out of the water, but like sometimes it can be really simple. And I think that's something that I've learned at work too. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be <laughs> like a crazy uh, 3D like render or something like that. It can just be simple. and. Sometimes like you just need to communicate an idea very simply through motion. Um, like for a lot of Nike projects, like we're showing like, hey, it's Nike, but it's this. And we're showing like a transformation of some kind. So as far as like maybe like tips and stuff like that, I think a lot of tutorials help me a lot and just like learning how other people work and just like, you know, asking them how they work too um, can really be really revealing as far as like workflow goes and how that can be applied to your 
approach, I guess. Okay, we have another question from our chat, our online chat. Robert Martinez asks, for larger projects that you're scouted for, how often do you have to make concessions? And how have you found ways to get your style in that benefits the project as a whole in these situations? I mean, I guess I'm not like personally scouted for large projects. It's more so my studio. Um, I think that, you know, like a client would have a pretty good idea of what um, a studio could bring to a project. Um, I also think that you have to kind of be considerate of how maybe like conservative or open the client might be to change um, and find a way that you can put your personal point of view into that. And also like it's a, I think there's always really good opportunities and things that feel really refreshing um, when you might feel like a client's more conservative or like scared to make big changes and you offer like an insight, whether it's kind of like small or big and they react really well to it. I think kind of like gauging out um, how they feel to change, um, kind of like testing the waters is good for that. Otherwise, um, yeah, we don't really like do concessions or anything. So. I guess I can speak to being scouted like within industry. Um, sometimes like they're like, our account team does a lot of decision making on who is on which project and things like that. And um, you know, even though we're all capable of doing this uh, similar things within design, uh, I think sometimes like Brooklyn gets put on a lot of projects for like creating tone. I obviously get like a lot of motion things and sometimes things kind of overlap or like, hey, like we want to give people opportunities to explore something else like that's outside of their comfort zone. Um, and that can be kind of exciting because then you have that opportunity to put your style into something that you're maybe not so comfortable with as far as like creating like a, a mood board or um, iterating on a design layout or something like that. Um, but as far as like being able to put your touch in there, I think that just kind of, I don't know, kind of comes naturally or just it will be there no matter what just because it's, it's you and you're always making it and like, uh, I don't know can't change it, I guess. I think I had some advice given to me about like, not like disliking your work because you made it, but if you take yourself out of it, then you're taking away the most valuable thing about it. I think also to Gavin's point, um, and this can be said for student work as well, like being open about your passions and your interests. Like I get put on projects about like clothing and basketball and stuff and it's because like I talk to my coworkers about that and they know that I like it and people like want to put you in an environment that they know you're going to like be able to bring yourself into and like tell the most authentic story so I definitely feel like um yeah being upfront about like what you like sometimes about what you don't um is really helpful in getting kind of like projects that are a good fit to you wait we have maybe time for like one or two more questions, if anyone has one. I think you have to ask yourself like, do I like this because it's trendy or do I like this because I actually like it? That kind of goes to anything. I think like we're constantly bombarded by new information, new design, like new technology, media is everywhere. And I think like, I don't know, being in touch with like what you actually like is really helpful and kind of like removing yourself, not always being on Arena or Pinterest or whatever and not like constantly being on Instagram is really helpful to that, to like, kind of be in touch with yourself and figure out what you actually like. Obviously, like it's important to see new work and I feel like inspired by new work all the time. But I think that, you know, like at my core, I know what I like and I don't. And I think that's kind of like the best way to combat maybe like being swept into what's trendy. And also like looking at things that have a longevity to stay impactful over time. That's like inspiring that things can be relevant as they are were 50 years ago and they are now 
like being inspired by that kind of work is helpful in that. Yeah, absolutely. I think longevity is a big one too, or just um, thinking like to add to what Brooklyn said about like the the function of it in a way, like the whole the idea of like function over fashion in in that sense. Um, and I think that's kind of rooted in like the core idea, like what is the idea of it, and like how is that um, driving the design, and sometimes. I think like getting away and not falling into like a trend, I think can be not like a remedy for it, but like uh, just a tool as well. Like I think sometimes like with the projects that I've been on, it's like, okay, like the, this is the idea. It's clear. This is like, this is like about fleece. This is about fun. And it's already eliminated a lot of like these different trends or different things that are like, you know, that I'm like seeing a lot of the times. Um, and it kind of takes away some of the like guesswork and it's like, okay, it's just about this and you can kind of focus in and hone in on it because you have an idea that's anchoring you to your process, I guess. So really great questions. I think we captured most of them in the chat for people who are online attending. Um, so if you couldn't hear it, it's probably written. Any, any last stuff? This has been amazing. Thank you both so much for your time and thanks to everybody who tuned in and our awesome audience for asking such good questions. Thanks to Bijan for being here from Fisk as always and Chelsea who has been manning the chat here and to um, one of our alumni, Jason, who's here and um, asked a signature question, always good. <laughs> Um, and thanks to our folks in the tech booth, including Wes and team. Um, yeah, this has been great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.